All right. All right, let's get a Bible open to Acts chapter 28. Take your Bible, turn to Acts chapter number 28. We're going to get right in the scripture this evening. And um, I've got some other things to talk about here in a little while. Acts chapter number 28. Don't forget to continue to pray for Mrs. Sherry and their family during this uh, uh, time for them. God will continue to bless them and uh, uh, work in their hearts. Comfort them as only he can do. Acts chapter 28. Now I want you to look at this story tonight. And I'm going to bring you a little truth uh, here from this scripture. It's been preached all kinds of different ways. This way I felt like the Lord gave it to me. Acts chapter 28 and look at verse number 1. And when they were escaped, then they knew that the island was called Melita. And the barbarous people, barbarians, people didn't even know God, showed us no little kindness. For they kindled a fire and received us, every one, because of the present rain and because of the cold. All right. They're on a desert island or a wicked, wicked old heathen island. It's freezing cold rain. I, I, I imagine that being there with about the heathen people and they got a fire going. Now, look at verse 3. And when Paul had gathered a bundle of sticks and laid them on the fire. Now, that tells you a couple things. First of all, the Apostle Paul wasn't too good to get out and load up a bunch of sticks and throw them on a fire and help build a fire. If it had been nowadays, he'd have said, well, I'm going to have some of my men come over and build that fire and throw those sticks on there while I lay back in my five-star motel and eat Philip Migdon. That's what he would have said nowadays. But uh, he was not too good to work with his hand. Occupation tent maker. There's something wrong with a preacher that won't work. There's something wrong with a preacher that's got soft hands like a girl. Jesus worked in a carpenter's shop for 12 years at least. And he did, his hands wasn't that wide. I mean, uh, he worked. He worked. And so these preachers nowadays think they've got a little bit above it. The old timers used to call it getting above your raisin. Where they think they're special. You know, and they're supposed to be treated special. Now, you know, we are supposed to be treated special. Probably a deeper place than hell where we deserve. But uh, uh, not the good kind of special. But anyway, he gathered sticks and he threw it on fire. Uh-oh, look what happened. And there came a viper out of the heat. In that country, probably something like a, like a cobra, brother. Imagine a cobra coming running out of that fire and fastened on his hand. So it didn't just bite him. He dug him hanging there and hung on him. Hand hanging like getting a snake hanging on your hand. And when they said, I said, Oh my Lord, in the morning. I, and, and, them, and them crazy people show they all have morals in them countries that don't have Bibles. Watch it. And when the barbarians saw the venomous beast hanging on his hand. See, a snake's a beast, y'all. A snake ain't a pet. Look, I don't want to make nobody mad, hurt nobody's feelings, but if you've got a snake for a pet, there's something wrong with your head, people. You ain't right. You ain't right up here somewhere. Amen? Okay, you don't care. You get mad. People are like, oh, I, I, I love my snake and he loves me. No, you're crazy for loving it and it don't love you. You're just a nut. You're a nut. It's a venomous beast. What it says hang on his hand they said among themselves no doubt this man is a murderer whom though he escaped the sea yet vengeance suffereth not to live now think about that now I didn't want to preach it on but them people had enough sense to know uh huh he must be a wicked man that's why that snake bit him like that man. they had a they had a, a, a head of justice the moral law of God written in their heart they didn't even know God that shows everybody knows. People knows what's right and wrong. So they get turned over to reprobate. But look here what he said. And but, but, verse 5. And he shook off the beast into the fire. That's important. He didn't throw it in a, in a ship. He didn't throw it in, a, in the water. He threw it in the fire. And felt no harm. Howbeit, when they looked, he should have swollen. 
or falling down dead suddenly. See, some of them snakes over there, they call them two-steppers and four-steppers. and That's right. That's right. That means one of them bites you, you take four steps before you fall over dead. That's the truth. They snakes over there, so venomous, if they bite you three steps, you're dead. You're on the ground, buddy. Ain't no 911 going to the hospital, you know, cutting across, sucking poison out. You're dead. You're dead. Now, look at what he said. Uh, and when that happened, they looked a great while and so no harm to him. They changed their minds and said there was a God. I want to preach tonight on the subject, when the weather gets warm, the snakes start crawling. Now, that is true tonight in all of life. Uh, one good thing about winter, y'all know that winter is not my favorite time of year. I'll take it. And I enjoy life. But winter is, but one good thing about winter is that snakes are gone. Hallelujah. Now, if you're going to have warm weather, you're going to have snakes. And just as soon as it gets warm enough, them snakes come out of wherever they was all winter and start Going around. My mom always said snakes like the same temperature as humans. If it's comfortable for us outside, it's comfortable for them. If it's really chilly out night, they'll they'll go back in the hole wherever they come out. But when the weather gets warm, snakes start crawling. And just seen a few weeks ago, I hadn't seen a snake all spring till a few weeks ago. And one morning, it's pretty early, I was out in the driveway and somebody called me and I was on my phone and I was walking around talking like this. And I was like, oh, there, there was one. It was that color and about that long. Just going right across in front of me on the driveway. And I just sort of walked behind it and put, took my foot out like that, you know, watched it slither on down through there uh, across the front yard. And it wasn't, it wasn't two minutes that I hung the phone up and I went to run, run down the driveway. And right at the bottom of the driveway, there was another big fat brown one. I think it was a ground snake, the big fat. And it just went right in the pipe that goes underneath the driveway. Two in just a few minutes. So they're out. The weather gets warm. Now what that is a picture of, what that's a picture of, in the present rain and in the cold, nobody saw a snake. Listen to me carefully. In that present rain and in that cold, nobody saw a snake. As soon as that fire got going, snakes started moving around in it. Now, that is why you have so much trouble in a Bible-believing, Bible-preaching church. And that is why the big churches, the dead churches, the cold, present rain, freeze, froze to death, where Dr. Jack Frost stands up every Sunday with icicles dripping off his nose, on the first church of the refrigerator ever has a problem. They all sit there every Sunday. Their bills are paid. They have millions of dollars in the bank. They shake hands. They leave. No snakes ever show up. But just as sure as you get a fire going, just as sure as weather gets warm, you can count on it that the, the snakes are going to move. Now, let me tell you something. Now, I want to give you this little truth tonight. When you really get on fire, see, on fire for God, that's when the devil is going to hit you. I told that good preacher out there in Missouri this week. I said, brother, get ready. Get ready. You're going to get it. You're going to get it. I mean, the snake's going to come out of this fire. I, Brother Ronnie down there, I, years ago, uh, uh, I think the first or second time I had Dr. Ruckman up in Marion, um, I, I, I was anxious to know what, what he thought about our church because he'd been in, in uh, probably 800 different Baptist churches. And uh, uh, he, people were getting saved right and left, people shouting, running the aisle and everything. And uh, he got up and he said, uh, he said, you know you're not going to get away with this, right? That's what he said. And I, I said, yeah, what are you talking about? He said, uh, uh, that you're not going to do right and get by. You're not going to do wrong and get by. So you're going to get it either way. And so he's, what he was saying was, the devil don't like what's going on here. I would hate to belong to a church so sorry and cold that the devil didn't fight it. I've heard people say, Brother Danny, why do we have so many problems? And, and people arguing and people getting divorced and young people rebelling and everything. Because there's a fire burning. Why do you think? Duh. Uh, that's why. Brother, uh, when the fire gets burning, the snakes start moving. I'm telling you, that's the truth that I want to uh, convey over to your heart uh, tonight. I couldn't tell you uh, the churches that I've seen 
that used to have a fire burning and, and they just got tired of fighting the snakes and uh, gave up. Now they're dead at four o'clock. And so we'll look at this truth quickly in two or three aspects. Number one would be in the life of Jesus Christ. There in uh, Matthew chapter 4, you don't have to turn to it, but you see this principle. Uh, you see this. Uh, Jesus was 30 years of age. It didn't happen when he's 24. It didn't happen when he's 28. It didn't happen when he's 18, 19, uh, 20, 21, 27, uh, 26. But when he's 30 years of age, he went into the desert and he fasted for 40 days and 40 nights. And God anointed him there, or, or, or the, the Spirit of God came on him there at his baptism. And the Lord, was, he began his earthly ministry. And the Bible said, then, right then, Satan showed up. Right when he started his ministry. Y'all have heard me tell that story before. Years ago, I had a dream, and I'm, I'm going to preach on dreams again. People ask me about it all the time. So I'm going to do it again, maybe pretty soon, for you that wasn't here not about 10 years ago. Uh, but I remember when I, when I first started preaching, I started preaching when I was 19 years old. And not long after that, I had a dream. And I don't say that all dreams come from God. Obviously, they don't. Dreams come from three places. Dreams come from, number one, God. God does send some dreams. He did in the Bible. Number two, the Bible teaches that some dreams come from, from the devil and demonic spirit. Filthy dreams mentioned in Jude. You just have an old filthy dream. You have no idea where it come from. You ain't even been thinking about it. Out of the clear blue, you just dream something wicked. And perverse. Uh, that, that, that's where them dreams come from. And then number three, dreams come from a multitude of business. You're just so busy. That's what the Bible says. And they, you're just so busy. And you've been busy and you dream you're just putting up boxes and you're putting up boxes and you're putting up boxes. And, and you just dream crazy stuff like that. But I remember when I first got saved and started preaching, I dreamed that I was walking down Hoppy Tom Holler, the road I live on. And I can show, I can show you the spot right now uh, where I was at in this dream. And I was walking and I was about probably a tenth of a mile. I got it all figured out where the tenth of the mile are. And uh, I was about a tenth of the mile from the end of the road where it meets Highway 70. And I was just walking up through there like this, minding my own business. And I looked down and I saw a snake. And that snake well, wasn't but about that big around, but he had to be, had to be at least 2,000 feet long, at least. His head was way up yonder uh, uh, above me at the end of the road. And his tail, I couldn't even see it. And I, he, was just, he was just sliding down the road. And I was walking down the road, me and him, just like that. And in my dream, I stopped. And I pulled out of my pocket one of these little box cutters. I mean, y'all know what a box cutter is. A little silver knife, you pop a little thing up, a razor blade comes out. And I, it's plain as day. I can remember it to this day. And I popped that thing open. And I reached over like that and I cut him. And when I cut him like that, I looked up and he's, his head turned around like this. Right at me. And he started flying right toward me. And his head was this high off of the ground. His body was down there. The Lord, I mean, the Lord showed me this plain as day. And he's coming right at me. I bet he's doing 30 miles an hour coming right at me. I went, oh, my goodness. I done made him mad. And when he got right here, I jumped out of the way. And he went way down that way. And when he got down there, he turned around like this. Started coming back. And I went like that. And when he got right to me, I jumped out of the way. And he went down there. And it was back and forth like that to the end of the dream. Jumping out of the way, out of the way, out of the way. Out of the way. And I, I woke up. And it was like the Lord said, all right, son, this is your life. You was going down the road, 16, 17, 18. I didn't bother him. He didn't bother me. I worry about people that never have no problem out of the devil. If you never run into the devil, you and him going the same way, bud. Right, right. Amen. You start going that way, you're going to hit. Right. Amen. And, and, I, and, and I stopped when I was 19, and I pulled out a sharp, double-edged, two-edged sword, sharper than any razor blade that the world's ever seen. And I stuck him with it, buddy. And I'm telling you, he's been after me ever since. It ain't been nothing but a fight ever since that day. It's just been boom, boom, boom. <laughs> and from that day to this, and it's still going on. And I'm telling you tonight, when you take a stand, you young men called to preach, uh, you you girls uh, get in the bus ministry, serve the Lord. About the time
time you say, I'm going to live right, I'm going to make up, you go to camp, you get on fire for God, you mark her down, brother, out of that heat, out of that fire, that old devil's going to rear his ugly head. He's going to try to mess up your life. He'll cause you family problems. He'll cause you physical problems. He can get away with it. He'll cause you financial problems. It ain't nothing but a fight from then on. And he come to Jesus, brother, and he tempted him, and he tempted him, and he tempted him. And the Lord reached down and took that scripture. That Jesus did the same thing I did, or I did the same thing he did. See, when the devil said, uh, turn that rock into bread, Jesus went. It is written, man shall not live by bread alone. Ah, see? And the devil said, uh, cast yourself down. And, uh, unless you be, you know, you, you'll be all right. And he reached down and got that scripture again, two-edged sword. Ah, it is written again, Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. The devil said, Fall down and worship me. He reached and got his sword again. Uh, thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. Bam! Like that. See? That that when when the when the Lord began his ministry, when he got on fire for God, physically speaking, I mean we know he was God in the flesh, but you know what I mean? That's when the devil came out after him. Man, we killed a snake up in the top of my driveway one time, and boy, somebody ran over it with a car. And it and it looked like that, and the snake and the baby rabbits come out of its mouth. And I remember thinking, that's a picture of Satan and sin. And what's it up? Let me show you another thing. Secondly, when the seed is sown, in Luke chapter number eight, the Bible said the sower went forth to sow his seed. See? He said, some, remember, some fell on stony ground, some fell on uh, uh, rocks, and some fell on, on thorns. And, and, but then, and then it said, then cometh the devil. So as soon as you make up your mind, I'm going to witness. How many people said, you know what? I'm going to get in the bus ministry. I'm going to get on fire. Then cometh the devil. Lord, I've had people get in the bus ministry. I've had people say, I want to be a Sunday school teacher. Brother Danny, I want to help you camp. You know, then come up the devil. Right when you think you're doing good. Now, you wouldn't think that. Be, you wouldn't think that. You'd think, well, I'm on fire for God now. The devil leave me alone. He can go out there and get them people in the bar. He ain't going after them people in the bar. He's already got them. He's after the ones he ain't got. He's after the people that he don't have. He's after the people that are going the opposite direction. Amen. We're like we're going upstream, y'all. When the seed is being sown, buddy, you can count on it. Noah, there, after the greatest victory at that time in the history of the world. Oh, Noah stood up there. He preached 120 years. I'm telling you, boy, he had the victory. He got the, all the animals in the ark. He got his sons and daughters in there. They thought, glory to God, Noah, you was right. Everybody thought you was crazy for 100 years. And sure enough, it happened just like you said. I can't believe it. You was right, Daddy, all along. Everybody thought you was a nut, but you turned out right. And oh, Noah got the victory. And he got out there, and he had the whole world at his feet. And his boys went that way and that way and that way to populate and you know what happened? He got drunk. No sign of Noah drinking before that. Now all of that comes within the curse, the atmosphere changing, earth getting tilted on its axis and God knows what and liquor ferment and make it doing something different before then. All of that works in together. Right then when the devil hit him. Right when he got you have the biggest day he ever had on the bus. We'll have the more souls to save than ever before at the youth rally. Then cometh the devil. You wouldn't think it'd be that way. You'd think, you'd think, my goodness, boy, we're on fire. Woo! Youth rally fire's burning. We're getting ready to camp. Glory to God. There'll be a viper come out of that heat. Sure will. You know what? That's when the devil came there in the Word of God. He came to Eve, Adam and Eve, there in the Garden of Eden. He came right there when everything was going good. We have been in great services and then wind up having great trials. Amen. We're like the man that went over Niagara Falls in a barrel, you know, to show everybody, and people couldn't believe he did it, and he went over Niagara Falls in a barrel. And everybody thought, man, you're the, great, you're the bravest dude I've ever seen. Well, I cannot believe you didn't get hurt. And he's walking down the sleep, uh, street and fell on a banana peeling and like to broke his neck. That's the way the Christian life is. Uh, you come through a great trial. 
You win a great victory. You think everything's going good. You mark her down. I told Brother Ronnie and him, same thing, down there in Rockingham. I guarantee you the devil's plotting something right now. He's planning out something. And I say to every one of you young people and everybody in here that's really trying to do right, don't you, don't you go to sleep. Don't you bat your eyes. Right now the devil is planning something to work out over and I knock you out. He'll always come in a way you're not looking for him. You think I got that covered. I got that covered. I don't look at nothing dirty on my phone. I don't flirt with the women at the on the job. I, I don't let no man hit on me. I, I got everything covered. Bam! He'll hit you from a way that you are not expecting. I guarantee it. He's smart. He's like a serpent. And brother, he'll come right out of that fire. Amen. You make up your mind to be a soul winner. Bam! Every time you make up your mind, I'm going fast, brother Eddie. Your, your cousin will call you the next day. Won't take your steak out. I mean, that's right. I've had that happen over and over and over and over and over. You say, Brother Danny, I'm going visiting Saturday morning. And before Saturday morning, something will happen. In order to keep you from going, I'm telling you, that's when the devil, when the weather gets warm, the snakes start crawling. I've seen it over and over and over and over and over. I saw it in there and I saw it here. Right when everybody gets on fire for God. Right when the Holy Ghost is moving right when the temperature spiritually is hot and the fire's burning then the devil gets right in there somehow or another when the weather gets warm that's when snakes start crawling right at the invitation we had it this morning i was going to announce it tonight y'all i mean come on y'all set still church is over because it wasn't there was a couple of y'all in here that do it, but no, you, you, you don't need to get up and walk out right when it's... Got, I, I'd hate to be sitting back there sometimes. It's like Grand Central Station. Right when the Lord starts moving. Somebody's phone rung this morning. Did you hear that? I don't have no idea who it was. If it's yours, you ought to be ashamed of yourself and leave it in the car next Sunday. I don't bring my phone in here. I don't. You ain't got nothing that more important than what we're doing in here tonight. And if you bring it in, at least turn it off. Amen. You don't sit there and look at your phone. Host. Can you not listen to the Lord's word for 30 minutes without being? You, you need to have a phenectomy, brother. I go somewhere and have that thing surgically removed from your hand. I'm telling you, right when the Lord starts moving, that's when the baby will cry. The devil will pinch it. <laughs> I don't know about that. I don't know about that, but I've seen it happen over and over and over. I was witnessing to a, I've witnessed to more than one person, and I've had them right down to where I was getting ready to say, "Do you want to pray and get saved?" And the phone will ring, or a kid run in the house, "Mama," and just ruin it. So that fire was burning, and that snake come out of that fire, got on Paul's hand. Hang on to that big snake. I would hate to get snake bit. Anybody in here ever been snake bit? Raise your hand, please. Well, we got several in here. It's been snake bit. You survived. Uh, amen. What was yours? A cobra, Joe? I hope it wasn't a cobra. You wouldn't be here right now. Bro. What was it? Just a little black snake or something. Uh, now, I would hate to get snake bit. I ain't never been snake bit. I've always been scared of it. I've almost stepped on them 50 times. Uh, I, I tell Frankie, when you're around the back of the house, there, honey, walk out. I moved the lawnmower, the push mower, and just moved it one day, and there was a big one. Filed up underneath the push mower. Right in my carport. I came home one day uh, uh, from the post office. And I have my mail out. Look at that like that. You know, that's when it gets you in. I look, there's a copperhead right there with his head up on the step. Trying to get in my house. You don't think the Lord preached me a sermon right there? Hey, daddy. You think everything's all right? Well, it ain't. You think everything's going smooth? It's not. I remember one time when I was young, and I, was, I heard them old preachers go up in the woods and take your Bible and pray. I did it. I took my Bible. I went way up in the woods. I said, I'm going to be a man of God, like them old timers. And I said, I'm going to go up in the woods and call. I tried to act old when I wasn't. That's was stupid. You're going to get old. Don't worry. It'll be here real soon. But I remember, you ever seen a young preacher try to act old? So they think the power of God will come on. I've seen them, 20 and 25 years old, come up here like this. Well, it's good to be here. Oh, shut up, man. Be young while you can. It ain't going to last long. You better enjoy it while you can, kids. 
Uh, you'll, he'll be, one day you'll look back and say, good Lord. Sometimes people say, ask me, they say, Brother Danny, are, are you? I, say, I ask myself the same question. Surely not. That can't be true. I never thought that as old. And I remember, I remember going up in the woods and I said, I'm going to be like them old preachers. And I'm going to get on fire for God. I'm going to stay up here in the woods and pray. And I knelt down and there was a snake right there. I went, oh, Lord, have mercy. I get right there. And the Lord said, just because you're up in the woods don't mean the devil don't know where you're at. It's not your physical location that makes you close to God. And I still go up in the woods and pray. But I'm telling you, I learned the lesson. That going up on the mountain don't make you get right with God. Going up in your prayer closet, not that the devil will meet you there just like he'll meet you uh, down out here in the middle of the highway somewhere. I'm telling you tonight, you young people, you better hear me. You better hear me well. About the time you get on fire for God, you say, glory to God. Woo! Uh, the Lord sent me a girlfriend. Hey, better watch out. You better watch out. Right there. Right there. The devil will come out of that heat. He'll come out and fasten on you. Oh boy, I got a boyfriend. I've seen so many young girls. Oh my goodness. I've seen them come back from camp bawling their eyes out. Saying, Lord, I'm on fire for the Lord, Brother Danny. Praise God. Hallelujah. And the next week, get a job. Get a boyfriend. And lose all interest in church. That snake went like that right there. Now, in closing this evening, let me show you what Paul did. Here's what he did. The enemy was not Paul. The enemy was not the barbarians. The enemy was not the cold and the rain. The enemy was the beast that fastened on to his arm. And you know what Paul did? Paul did not do like a lot of us. Paul did not say, well, Brother Danny, I know I was doing good, but the devil bit me and I sinned the other night and I'm sorry and I'm just messing out. I just don't know if I'm going to camp and I just don't know if I'm, I just don't know. What he done? He shook it off. Where'd he shake it? In the fire. Paul said, you might hang on me. You might think you got me, big boy, but I'm throwing you right in that fire. Now, here's what happened. If the devil's bit you tonight, if the devil's got his fangs in you tonight, I tell you what you ought to do. I tell you what you ought to do. You ought to get down here and say, God help me, have mercy on me, and you throw up your hand and take a lap around this building a time or two and say, glory to God, it's good to be saved. Get on shouting ground and throw that blessed thing in the fire. Throw him in the fire. Get in an old-fashioned Holy Ghost service. Go to camp meeting this week uh, somewhere. Get on fire for God. Listen to some good old-fashioned Bible preaching on, on, the, on YouTube and say, I'm throwing in the fire. Throw that lust in the fire, brother. Throw that jealousy in the fire. Throw that doubt in the fire. Throw that wickedness in the fire. Throw that, say, praise God, I'm glad I'm saved. Good to be saved. Woo! Hallelujah! Throw it in the fire. That's what Paul did. He shook it off and threw it in that fire. He didn't say, I'm no longer worthy to gather sticks. I won't be there this week, preacher. I failed and got bit. He threw it in the fire, kept on going. And you know what them people did? They seen it didn't kill him. They said, man, that guy's got something. You know, people are watching us, you know. And when they see us going through trials and stuff and keep on going, they think, man, there's something to that guy. You, you're not judged by falling necessarily. You're judged by whether or not you get up. You get up and keep on going. Throw that thing in the fire. Tell the devil to go back to hell where he came from. Amen. Got marriage problems? Throw them in the fire. Not your husband. <laughs> your, your problems. <laughs> you say, not her. God. I to throw, throw your problems in the fire. You say, I don't understand that. Shout all over your kitchen floor, sister. Amen. Amen. Throw them in the fire. Listen, we had the fire down there, what was it, Thursday night, didn't we? Now, we had a great service, every service. But I'm telling you, Thursday night felt like camp in there, y'all. It was unreal. That lady got saved, sat down on the altar, and we all gathered around. There wasn't no lights in the tent. So people started shining their phones up to make a little light in there. And I got the guitar, and we started singing. People were shouting, right, and, and hallelujah. And, and, the pre and people said, man, my goodness, I ain't never seen nothing like this in my life. You know what we've done? We throwed that thing in the fire. 
You know what happened that night? A storm came, blew the tent down, tore it all to pieces. Thursday night, ripped it all to pieces. I don't know why that happened. Same thing happened over at Ralph Sexton several years ago when they was having that big tent meeting. A bunch of people got saved. That night, storm came. I don't understand that. I don't know if the Lord gives the devil permission or how. I don't, I don't, I don't know. We may have to get to heaven to understand why. But uh, instead of letting it stop us, see, we could have said, oh, well, can't do no video presentation. Right now. It's, the church is too little and the sun's too bright to do it outside. I told them, I said, go buy some tarps, brother. And they put the drive through of the bank that the church, the church is in a bank. I you ever heard, I just heard say, man, that church owns a bank. First church I ever met that actually does own the bank. And uh, they, it was a bank with a big old drive through about, you know how drive through is, double, big as this whole area right up here. So they put chairs underneath there and put tarps all the way around here so I could get it dark enough to show the video. And they worked all day on it, them guys did. And people were sitting out in the sun. And it was 90-something degrees. And brother, I felt sorry for Brother Ronnie. He preached first. Sweat just to drip it off him. And I kept saying, preach on, brother. And I was watching the sun go down. Preach on, brother. Let the sun go down. Because I was wanting it to, I was wanting it to get dark enough so I could, you know, show, show, show video. And, uh, and, I, and I got up and I said, let me tell you something, people. I preached in brush harbors. I preached in parking lots. I preached in restaurants. I preached in courthouse before. I preached down there on the side of the uh, sea down there in, in Haiti and, and baptized people in that water. I preached on the street in Hollywood and Washington, Washington D.C. And, and, and out in Texas and New York City and Chicago and Miami. I, pre I preached everywhere. That's the first time I've ever preached in a bank. drive through. I said, hallelujah, it's a blessing. And you know what we did? We did after Thursday night, we didn't say call up everybody and say, Well, I guess revival's over. Uh, the, the devil tore the tent down or something did. I don't know. You know what we done? We took that thing and we throwed it in the fire and we kept a singing and we kept a shouting and we kept a preaching. And then they changed their minds and said that God was in that place. And that woman got saved that night. That was that was the strangest thing I've seen in a long time. I told you about this morning if you wasn't in here. Oh, my goodness. Strange things we've seen today. And what you do with your problems. When you And, and, and you know what? I'm, and I'm through. Uh, Desi, come on to the piano right quick, please. I've seen a lot of people that say, Brother Danny, I just give up because every time I get right with God, something awful happens. My husband gets mad and he fusses at me or my daddy hits me or or my mom and dad fuss or something. And every time I really try to do right, something bad. So I just give up. That ain't the right way to do. The right thing to do is, you know what? I'm going to throw that thing in that fire. You know why that devil come out of that fire? Because he can't stand it. Throw him back in there. Wave your hand. Shout. Get the victory. You say, I'm not worthy. You, you are absolutely right. Paul wasn't worthy. Did Paul do something wrong to make that thing about him? No. Actually, he did something right. Right when you're really trying to do right, that's when the devil hits you. The devil didn't hit him because he's doing wrong. The devil hit him because he's doing right. You know why he didn't bite none of them other guys? Their hands wasn't in there. See? Their hand, they didn't have tracks in their hands. They didn't have a, a steering wheel of a bus in their hands. They didn't have a, 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 a prayer book in their hands. But man, he's, he's right there making that fire burn. Got him. I understand what I did. And people talking about it at the church. She's playing softly. What I did down there uh, Friday night. Many of you watched it online. There's a guy come up to me after church. And he said, I'm telling you, I admire you. You got guts. Stand up here and say what you said tonight. And I said, look, I ain't kidding myself. There are people right here in this town that would cut my head off for what I just got through preaching tonight. I'm not trying to sound big and tough. I ain't. I'm scared. I don't want my head cut off. I don't want it. I ain't trying to be no big tough guy. I won't start no fights with nobody. But I also understand if I do what I'm supposed to do, the devil's going to attack me. I'm, I'm, I mean, that's just all there is to it. You either sit down and do nothing, he'll leave you alone, or you get in a fight, they'll bite you. We only got one life. I know people that are really scared 
to really get on fire for God because they think, my goodness, I don't know what the devil might do if I do. No, you got it backwards, man. God's more powerful than the devil. God can keep him off of you. And he'll protect you. He'll bring you through it if you'll do right. You, you go ahead and surrender tonight. You go ahead and surrender. Let's stand with our heads bowed. You need to come to this altar. You come on right now. Come on. Something's already praying. This invitation tonight, we're not going, we're not going to tarry long. We're just going to get up here and pray and, and go tonight. Maybe the devil is just uh, trying to fasten on you. And he's messing with your head. And he's bothering you. Maybe you need to just come and say, Lord, I'm throwing this thing in the fire. I'm going to shout all the way home tonight. I'm going to say, glory to God, I'm glad I'm saved. And I'm going to have a good time. And Lord, I'm going to youth camp. I'm going to, I'm going to Sunday school. I'm on a bus route. I'm going visiting. Glory to God, I'm going to shake him off and throw him in the fire. Amen. Amen. Come on. Come on. Let's pray. Amen. Amen. Come on. Let's pray. Amen. Come on. Let's pray. Oh, God, help us tonight. Dear Lord, help us tonight. God, I pray in Jesus' name that you'd bless every single person here this evening. Dear Lord, do what ought to be done in our lives. Lord, we realize that there is a fire burning here at Shining Light Baptist Church. We know that. Lord, you, and the fire has been heated up ever since the youth rally. And then the, here comes youth camp. And Lord, I know that Satan is going to come out of that heat and he's going to bite it. I know that, Lord. There ain't no doubt in my mind. But Lord, God, give us enough grace and strength to shake him off. To shake it back in the fire. Keep shouting. Keep on going on for the glory of God. And keep our eyes on Jesus. And not give up. Not back up. And not let up. And not quit. Staying in there for the glory of God. Lord, we're too near the end to quit. We're too near the end to give up. We're too near the end to throw in the towel. God, give us grace. God, give us grace. Help us, Lord, we pray. Help us, Lord, to realize when the weather gets warm, the snakes start crawling. God, help every one of us to make up our mind. We're not going to be afraid. We're not going to be ashamed. But we're going to get on fire for you. When the snake hits us, we'll just throw him back in there. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Bless all these on the altar tonight. Bless all these young people. Give them a good week at school. Help them to make up their mind they're going to live right and serve you. Well, thank you for what you do. In Jesus' name we pray. And for his sake we ask it. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 All right. Y'all can turn the cameras off now. Amen. All right. Yes, sir. Yes, sir.